Cool. So uh, glad you guys are all here this morning. This is a new track for us. I'm really excited about it. Uh, I decided uh, uh, Friday morning, or actually, I guess the Lord decided for me Friday morning that, uh, that he was going to humble me. So uh, uh, Deborah and I made a trip to the emergency room about 2 a.m. Uh, mm -hmm. because I had uh, developed an allergic reaction. And, uh, and this is what I've had left since then. So uh, this is so I'm not supposed to overpower her, I guess. So that's going to work out really well today. <laughs> So uh, uh, the spouses track is a great thing. Uh, uh, Deborah and I are very much mm -hmm. engaged in what we do in HCG, and we'll talk about that a little bit more. But what I'd like to do, a lot of you are going to be in the room most of the day. I thought it would be good maybe to go around and kind of introduce yourselves and uh, get a chance to know who is, everyone is in the room. So maybe some idea of questions that you might want to answer when you go around. And uh, Nancy, we'll start over here with you on your side of the room and, and go around. So. Married to Jay Strickland of Henry Fifth Dimension. <laughs> <laughs> and we have three girls, and we've been in HG for a long time. So, how about that? Does that work? That's good. What, uh, any one thing that you'd like to learn in the next hour about HG or um, financial? I just want to meet some of the nicer ladies. In I here. think that's an excellent <laughs> <laughs> Nancy Sorensen, I don't have much voice either, so um, I'm married to Arlen. We've been in HTG forever. <laughs> we have two children, both grown. Uh, Lori's here, she's helping registration, so you might see her around. Um, I used to have hobbies, I don't have it right now, I just don't have time for it much. Now you have a major hobby. Following Arlen. <laughs> well, I'm saying about the grandchildren. Well, actually, more importantly, the yeah. Arlen. Actually, I'm going back tomorrow to babysit the grandkids. We have four. So. Um, my name is Christy Burrows. Um, Rockland, California is our home. I am, I am not married, but I am a life partner with Brian Badger. Um, we've been together for nine years. Um, we have two children. And um, favorite hobby, I, I personally love a, a thing called geocaching. I guess that's about as techie as I get. Um, H, we've been in H, I actually have been to every single HTG meeting right along with Brian um, since um, almost four years, three years ago, four, right around that. Um, and the, the reason why I'm here today is because they bore me. I'm not a tech. I get so, I just like, I really wanted to come in here and also meet a lot of the ladies on the other side um, and just try to have some fun today. Cool. Pam Anderson and from Clorinda, Iowa, married to Richard Anderson, the one that was standing up for us. <laughs> um, we've been married 32 years. We have three daughters and two of them are married and one is going to be married in July. We have four grandchildren and one more on the way, and um, that's probably my favorite hobby right now, too. Although we do geocache with our son-in-laws. It's a fun <laughs> so, sport. And uh, Richard is actually wor working for HTC, which is the new coaching consulting branch. And so he just started in January. This is my first time and, to a conference. Okay. Um, I'm Judy Detloff. Um, I'm from Lansing, Michigan. Um, I'm married to Jeff, and he's been in um, HTG, I think the first year it was maybe just an online thing that they were doing, and he's been in it since then, and um, we have two children, two grandchildren, um, hobby. Hmm. I love to oil paint, but it's probably been about eight years since I've been doing that, and that's about when we started our company, <laughs> so I don't have much time for that. Um, and I also just, I, this was a great, I thought, opportunity to come and meet someone that's not a tech also. <laughs> I don't talk the language, I don't get it, and it's just, I sit there and I, it's like everyone's talking Greek around me, so I thought maybe in here I will understand something. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'm Lynn Marath, I'm from uh, Berthoud, Colorado. My husband and I run a company, uh, Data Network Group. My husband's Michael Perkins. We've been HTG members since 2008. Um, we've been married 12 years, no children, just four-legged ones. <laughs> uh, my favorite hobby is flying and horseback riding, and um, 
Pamela and I are doing one of the HTG tracks later this afternoon. My name is Pamela Ziogas. Uh, my uh, from Chicago, actually a suburb outside of Chicago, Woodridge, Illinois. Married to Alex Ziogas. Uh, we're in HTG 16. We've been in HTG since 2007. We originally started in um, HTG 7, and then we moved over to 16. Alex was facilitator of 16. Um, we've been married 18 years, almost 19 years, and kids. We have three children: Alexandra, Ariana, and Luca. Alexandra's 16, Ariana's 14, and Luca's 10. So I've got two teenage girls. So fun time. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Favorite hobby? Oh, I love to scrapbook and make cards when I have time. But I love to. Sure, that was never My name is Barb Van Buskirk. I'm from Kansas City, Missouri. My husband is Ed Van Busker. He um, owns We Are IT, and he has been in HTG two years, I think. And first trip to kind of figure out what he's doing all this time. <laughs> uh, we have three kids. They're in their 20s, and um, no grandkids yet. I'm waiting for that hobby. <laughs> it's a good way. It's cool. <laughs> Uh, my name is John Pavlik. I'm from Portland, Oregon, and I think I might be in the wrong room. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought it'd be fun to see what you guys are talking about with the Financial 101, and uh, one of my favorite hobbies is flying also. So. Excellent. Cool. Cool. Good. In the back. Okay. I'm Deborah Strickland. Um, my husband Tom and I have Sequoia Technologies, and we're out of Peterborough, New Hampshire, which is a little town of 5,000 people. And uh, we're at STG 10, so I think, Christy, we're in the same group you're in, but we okay. haven't met you yet. We just joined HTG last quarter, so this is all new to us. And while I have a background in engineering and mathematics, I've never taken accounting. So I thought this, this morning's session would be really helpful for me with our profit and loss statements oh. and that sort of thing. And it is good to see so many women here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jessica Bates. I'm from Little Rock, Arkansas. I'm married to Chris Bates. We've been married since November. And I have a son named Gavin, and he is eight. And he has a son, Austin, and he's 13, 14. And um, my favorite hobby, I guess, right now is whatever sport my son's in. I'm not sure how long my spouse has been in HTG. I know he's in HTG 7. And yeah. <laughs> and um, I just wanted to meet some of the other ladies because you know all I meet is just texts and stuff like that and I only know Pam <laughs> and so it's just nice to see what's going on and what HTG really is. So. I'm Rosanna Love and I'm from Fort Worth, Texas so we're pretty close this time. Um, I'm married to Sunny Love who has Blue Jean Networks that are in Fort Worth. He's been, he started the company about four years ago, so uh, for the last couple of years I've been coming to the meetings with him, and, but I thought, well, from this, you know, even though I've kind of got an idea of what's going on, I thought maybe it, I'd get a better understanding from the meetings here. Um, we've been married almost 28 years. We have three children. My oldest is married, and I have three grandchildren, and then I have two, two at Texas A&M, one wow. graduated this summer, so. We're almost, <laughs> almost, almost there. I feel like we'll get a big raise here in a couple of years. Yeah, you will. <laughs> um, and then let's see, my favorite hobby, I love to read, I love to exercise, jogging. Right now we inherited from one of our children, a two-month-old, or well, now she's a four-month-old puppy. Mm -hmm. So she's kind of been our hobby for the last couple of months. <laughs> Just the training is like having a toddler in the house again. Mm -hmm. um, as I said, he's been he's he started the company four years ago, and we he joined HTG soon thereafter. Figured he wanted to get it right, and it's been a wonderful thing for him. Cool. Um, so, for as far as the financials for me, they always get up there and do their financial things, and half the time I'm lost, and the EBITDA and all the other things <laughs> they talk about. So I thought maybe this will help me to understand a little bit better. Cool. Up front. Hi, um, my name is Rose Wolf. I'm from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and I'm married to Lloyd Wolf. Um, we have two daughters, 16 and 11, and um, I also enjoy reading and exercise. Um, I don't jog, though, but I do uh, enjoy exercise. Um, and I came to the Orlando conference, and I was bored stiff, so when this opportunity came up, I was thrilled to have something to do on my own for the day that you know I could be with other people, so this is great. Cool. Okay. Cool. 
my name is Allison Anderson. I'm also the way Allie. And um, I am married to the other Richard Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, which one of you is the other? <laughs> Maybe he was first, so I don't know. <laughs> but um, uh, Rich owned the company in Myrtle, Minnesota, and I worked with him there for eight years as his CFO. And we were working on the name and that process um, in exchange for our marriage. <laughs> being here other than being away from our one daughter. We have a daughter who's eight years old. Um, <clears throat> I love seeing Rich in his element, um, but I also work now for a mergers and acquisitions company with uh, managed services as their niche. And so I constantly deal with small business owners <laughs> in this industry all day, every day. And um, just kind of understanding their psyche and where they're coming from and what's important to them, especially when they're in the process of either buying or selling their companies really fragile state is um, interesting to me, so I'm looking forward to that. And my hobby is actually alternative health practices, acupuncture, herbal remedies, cool. things like that. Yeah. Hi. <coughs> Excuse me, I've been sick the past 48 hours. Um, my name is Kim West. I am married to Jameson West, who owns Arturian in Seattle, Washington. And we have been married 12 years. We have two children, six and eight years old. And um, I don't really have time for a hobby right now. I'm just kind of yeah. scrambling around with the kids and their sports and whatnot. Um, I think Jameson's been a part of HTG for four years and absolutely loves it. And this is my first time coming to one of the conferences. And i um, super excited to, to meet you all. I'm Ann Schoolcraft. My husband is Keith Schoolcraft, and he owns a couple of gurus in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And um, we've been married for almost 13 years. We have two children, six and three. And my son decided to fall off the bed and split his lip right as I was getting on the plane yesterday morning. But oh. Grandma took care of him, and everything's OK. Um, I sing in a choir. That's my hobby. Um, I don't know how long Keith's been coming to HUG, a long time, and it's been great. This is my first time coming to the full conference, though. And I'm excited to, well, to learn about financials and all the businessy stuff because my background is in software engineering, and usually when he starts showing me spreadsheets, my eyes cross, so I'm hoping to get that nailed down today. Um, my name is Tara Deardorff. I'm married to Trevor. He owns Amnet in Colorado Springs. Um, we've been married for nine years. I have two stepdaughters. They are 16 and 18. Um, my favorite hobbies would be reading, Zumba, shopping. Um, we've been in HTG for, I think, six years. Um, I used to go to all the meetings with him. I was a bigger part of the business and kind of like what you're trying to do, took a step back for the sake of our marriage. It is very hard to be to work full time with, with your spouse and still have a, a great marriage. So um, just kind of interested in connecting with other women who know the know and understand the dynamic of being married to a business owner and entrepreneur. Um Darlene Bazaar. Um, my husband's Ross and we're um, we live outside Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and we have four kids and no hobbies really, just help with the business. And I think he's been a member for about five or six years for HTJ. Cool. So, just here to learn. Good. Okay. <laughs> Hi, um, I'm Tara Lancel, and um, we live in Midlothian, Texas, which is just south, and the traffic was hideous trying to get here. <laughs> and so, I was late. And so uh, um, my husband is Elliot Lancel, and he owns uh, Network Logic, which is just down the road here in Dallas. And, uh, um, we've been married for 16 years. Coming up in June will be 16. Um, our son Hayden is nine, and our daughter Sadie is seven. Uh, my favorite hobbies: I love to read. I'm on the third book of the Hunger Games, <laughs> and, and uh, I like to crochet. And I think Elliot's been in HTG for a couple years, maybe two, three, something like that. I'm not really sure. And I want to understand about it. I don't know. I just know he. He leaves a lot, and I get stuck with the kids a lot. <laughs> so he goes, I don't know. 
they have lots of meetings. <laughs> I'm Kim Blau. Um, I live in Cairo, Georgia. I'm married to Paul. Um, we've been married 27 years. We have um, eight children, ranging in age from two to 26. Wow. Um, hobby, I don't really have a lot of time. <laughs> <laughs> Seven children at home right now, so I do like to read and shop. Um, I think he's been in HTG about a year and a half, maybe two years, and. Um, I'm kind of like her. I just want to see what they do when they're here because this is my first time getting away from all the children to be here. So, um, and I'm in this class because he insisted on me coming. To <laughs> <laughs> um, my name is Vanessa Bickmore, and my husband is Carl Bickmore, and we live in Mesa, Arizona. And uh, we've been married for 15 years, and we have three kids. They are ages almost 14, almost 11, and nine. Um, we, we all have birthdays like in the next couple weeks here. And um, my favorite hobbies, um, a friend and I started a little hiking group in our area and we like to do different trails out in the desert and hike three times a week, so that's kind of fun. And um, I think he's been a member of HTG for a couple years, I don't know, but and this is my first time coming, so. Oh, yes. I'm Deborah Lindley, and I've been married to Robert for over 30 years. This is going on our 31st year, and we are first time grandparents. Yes. <laughs> and if anybody wants to see pictures, I will, I, you know, twist my arm and I, I'll They're show in my you. QBR deck, so yeah, are they? Uh, Kingston just turned nine months old, and Nana really misses him right now. So we have two kids. We have uh, Melissa, who is married to Luke. Um, then we have Christopher. Um, what are my hobbies? Uh, I love to scrapbook. I love Bible studies with doing anything Beth Moore. Nancy and I are going, yeah. Um, let's see, uh, we're real active in our church. And I don't really know how long Robert has been in, in HTG. Since 2007, so five but, years. But I'll tell you this, everybody that's here that doesn't understand what it's all about, you will when this is over with. Because I've been there. I've been there going, well, what is this? So, so she anyway. set the expectation kind of high there, so you'll know everything you need to know about HTG. Yeah, well, the important stuff. So anyway. you didn't mention anything about sewing, and you have the sewing studio, so I just kind of. Yeah, I like to sew. <laughs> I, I, I like anything to do with the Civil War, and I've done a lot of research on women that lived through the Civil War, and to honor them, I've been making these primitive dolls, and then I have a, the story about this person that's, that's with them, so. And I, I really, really like doing that, so. And I like to shop. For those of you that like to shop, yeah, shopping and scrapbooking. Whoever it was that said scrapbooking, yep, I'm all about scrapbooking. Love it, love it. Okay, go oh, ahead. We're, we're good. Okay, we're good. go ahead. Are you finished? I'm finished. Okay. So um, uh, what we thought we'd start off with was just a little bit about HDG language. So how many are first time, have never been to an HDG meeting before? Because there was a number of you in the room, right? Okay, so wow, we language. have our own language, right? Have you noticed yeah. that? Yeah, so uh, I thought it might be helpful just to kind of have throw some of this stuff up there so you can get an idea of kind of what this means maybe and, uh, and how it is. And, and as, as we said in the abstract, Deborah's really here to keep me in check. So uh, when I start going off on the ozone somewhere, then she'll, uh, she'll slap me upside the head and we'll be good. So, uh, But this, this HTG, HTS, HTC, what is that thing all about? So uh, Heartland Technology Solutions is, is a company that... Uh, that Arlen and Nancy uh, yeah, have been doing for a number of years now. Uh, mm -hmm. And what's spun out of that was a interest in setting up peer groups and just sharing with, it's actually an interest in just sharing with other people that were in the industry to start with. And uh, this started up way back in 2000. Uh, and w even well before that, I think they were actually started meeting before that. But uh, so Heartland Technology Group, this one group started meeting and there was a real desire to be able to, uh, uh, to, to draw these people into uh, to a group where they could share information and share best practices. And, uh, and so that idea started and uh, the first group cut full and everybody was kind of happy with that. And, and uh, let's do a second and, and let's do a third. And uh, at that time, Arlen had the idea that uh, one of his employees would actually facilitate each one of the groups. And about the time they got to 10, uh, the, the, his, his company was saying, now, what are you doing here? We're going to four meetings around the country, all different places, and we're taking one person out of our organization for those meetings. So it got a little bit overwhelming. 
And, uh, and so that's kind of morphed into what you see now where we have facilitators that are also members of their own group uh, for the most part, not always, but most part. And, uh, and so these facilitators then travel uh, and meet with their particular group. So this, uh, our Q2 meeting and our Q4 meeting are held in a uh, common area. So we'll be in Dallas for Q2 this year, be in, uh, down in Orlando for Q4. The Q1 and Q3 meetings then are kind of selected as to where they want to meet. You guys already know this, those of you have been. So sometimes you get a chance to go to a different part of the country and, uh, and see some other areas. So we're really excited about Q3 for us this year. We're going actually up to Banff, Canada. So we're actually going to be in Calgary for our Q3 meeting. So we're looking forward to that. So uh, that's HTG. HTC is actually what Richard Anderson, back here, our, our second Richard Anderson in our group, uh, is uh, part of. And, and the fact he'll be uh, uh, working with Arlen in a consulting role, a coaching role. And so now those owners of us that are, are looking uh, for that next level, we, we've been meeting with our peers, but we really need someone to work with us one-on-one, -on -one. Um, then this gives us an opportunity to reach out to another organization. And this is the startup year for that, and we're looking forward to great things out of that as well. And I, I assume there'll be other Heartland technology stuff. So I'm just looking for more letters after the end. We'll just see where it goes yeah. from here. So. Uh, in addition to that, so you hear a number of different kind of positions within HDG. Uh, of course, you've met some of the staff. Uh, so Christy uh, does an excellent job. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, the Scout kids did a fantastic job and have been doing that for a number of years and helping Christy put together this, uh, this uh, event. And then we've got several full-time staff members that actually work out of the office as well. Um, uh, Scott Scroggins is our uh, CEO. So, no, he's president. Uh, Arlen would be the CEO. And so that kind of gives you the, the staff layer. Ken uh, Shetler is actually in charge of our vendors. Uh, the advisory council, Arlen, looked like wanted to group, pull a group of partners together, five or six that could advise him on where we wanted to take this group. And so that's what the advisory council is. I, I serve with, uh, with Arlen on that as well. And then we have each one of the groups is, is led by a facilitator. The facilitator is a paid position that, that uh, basically organizes the meetings, puts everything together for the meetings, uh, helps hold some of the partners accountable to get their stuff in. We'll talk a little bit about the stuff in a minute. Um, and then, of course, your members, so the partners that are actually attending, and then the vendors that help make up a number of um, majority, two-thirds of our budget is actually made by our vendor involvement. So you've heard these other terms. So anyone know what a SIG is? Ah, Pamela knows. Very good. So yeah, so, uh, so I assume Alex has been involved in those. Yeah, yeah. all right, so good. So we, we, we meet together as a peer group, and that's an opportunity for us to, to meet with uh, 11 other owners that are in other areas of the country. A SIG is an opportunity for us to come together with people that have like interest. Uh, for instance, I went to one on mobility last night, and that was uh, a room where people were wanting to just talk about the mobility practice and what was going on there. Uh, so that's an opportunity when we get together in Q2 and Q4 for us to have some separate meetings that kind of go off to the other end. Not that we don't have enough meetings already, right? So in addition to that, we have SWATs. So anyone heard of what a SWAT is? Uh, yeah. Pamela, you're good on this too? What's SWAT? Yeah? Yeah? Cool. cool. So SWAT stands for Strengths, Weaknesses, Opportunities, and Threats. And it's, uh, it's really just a mechanism to open up dialogue. And it's a great way for you to find out kind of what's going on with the business. We actually had a, uh, uh, three members from our Leadstrat group, another group, another set another of meetings uh, that actually came to Little Rock uh, and met with us. And uh, what was really interesting for us is they actually interviewed our staff without the leadership team there. Uh, and that becomes very telling. Often, oftentimes there's uh, things that are not necessarily being reported to, to those that are in leadership roles and uh, they kind of come out during that, which is awesome. Uh, gives us a chance to kind of grow the program and grow what we're doing within our business. So CHAMPS, another, uh, another one, any, any guesses on CHAMPS? Yeah, so <laughs> Pamela, you're well informed, awesome. <laughs> So, so champs are uh, a way of uh, engaging at a deeper level with our vendors. 
So uh, we have some partners in our groups that will take on a, an ownership of a role with, uh, for instance, ConnectWise, where they may get a deeper relationship with ConnectWise. Like today at lunch, there are a number of the, the groups that are meeting, their champs are actually meeting together to kind of take that. And then that allows us to take that information and then get it out to each one of the peer groups. So it's just another way within the organization. So what we're actually doing today is really HDG all. So when you see something that's kind of HDG all, that's really what we're doing in Q2 and Q4. Uh, when we meet tomorrow and Thursday, we'll actually be in our peer group meetings. We're back to again, being that 10, 11, 12 members meeting together in one room. The really great thing about HDG for me has been the opportunity to not only learn from partners overall, but to be able to go into a room with 11 partners that are non-compete territories, they're not, they're not competing with us at all, and really undo everything. Show everything to them, best practices, mm -hmm. financials, everything. And uh, we're actually gonna go through our QBR, my QBR, our QBR, uh, here in just a couple of minutes, and that's kind of how we'll get into the financial discussion. In addition to that, we have groups called Principles and Sales and Service, and that is a, a way to kind of break and engage more levels so uh, what we find in HDG is the deeper the uh, penetration within the organization and the participation in HDG, the more that they get from, from, from being a member and actually being part, and part of this. So for us, we have a, a couple of members that are here um, that are attending other things right now. So some of them are involved in sales, some of them are involved in service. So hopefully a, a way for us to grow the organization even deeper. So we have a portal where we upload all this stuff so all these QBRs and all these financial records and all this stuff gets uploaded to this portal and it actually is a place where we keep all that information. And so uh, I just thought it'd be interesting to throw that up and we may actually bring it to the side. Did yep. you tell them what a QBR is? I didn't, but I actually have it right here coming okay, up. Okay, sorry. You, you want to tell them what a QBR no, is? You just, you're doing fine, go right ahead. <laughs> sure. If you get it wrong, I'll tell you. Okay, all right. <laughs> That's good. So uh, we also had the four plans. So. This has been, this one here was big for Deborah and I. So uh, the four plans are business, and you hear this word gazelle, and, and that's just another way of doing a business plan, a strategic plan. And then we have leadership plan, we have life plan, legacy plans, and really it's not four plans, it's really five plans, because now we're talking about business continuity and disaster recovery, uh, and then uh, some other things we'll talk about in a second. But for us, the life plan was a really big deal for us. So we started doing this, what, three years ago maybe, yeah, two years yeah. ago? So uh, uh, it made us start being intentional about the things we were trying to do for ourselves. Uh, doing the bucket list, uh, I don't know whether any of you have done that with your spouse, but doing the bucket list was awesome. So the ability for us to sit down and say, you know, uh, given where we are right now, especially the way I'm feeling today, uh, being able to you know, say, hey, at some point we are gonna kick the bucket, what do we want to get done before then? Uh, so one of the things we've said is a mark for us is to stay one, state, one night in this, every state in the U.S. Uh, and uh, HGG is actually kind of helping us do that. Yes, they are. <laughs> so we, we're kind of traveling around the country getting a chance to do that. So that's kind of cool. So QBRs, I uh, assume you've heard that several times probably uh, in, uh, in your history. And uh, so this is a quarterly board review. So this is a, a document or something that's used during the meetings. Uh, where the HDG partner will get up and talk about what's going on with their company. And I'll show you uh, uh, ours here in just a couple of minutes. Anyone have an idea what a BHAG is? Awesome, yeah. Big, scary, audacious goal. Awesome. Very right. good. good. Yeah. So uh, it's kind of interesting just talking about what's out there. And uh, I think what all of us are learning as business leaders is that uh, setting that thing out there way farther than we think we can even get at uh, is definitely a motivator for team. So I thought that was a good one to throw out there. All right, so now to financials. So uh, SLI, I bet that's caused some pain for your husband or your spouse, right? Yeah, a little bit? Are you? <laughs> yeah. So uh, what's interesting is if we want to get into a room with a bunch of business owners and we want them to be able to share uh, information, oftentimes we need to know at what frame that information is coming from. And so we realized early on, and this is way back when we started HDG early on, we needed a mechanism to be able to compare our financials with each other. And so, you know, we'd come to meetings, we'd bring our, our, our profit and loss statement, we'd bring our balance sheet, and mine would be totally different than Rich's, you know, it'd be totally different than Arlen's. And it's like we put these side by side and we go, oh, well, that's interesting. I have no idea what this means because it really didn't mean much because you couldn't line up anything across each other. So the idea behind service leadership index for us, or this SLI thing you hear, 
is we want to have the ability to be able to put things in the same buckets. And so we all kind of know what goes in this bucket. We know what goes in this bucket. And I may have to adapt my way of doing it a little bit. Arlen would adapt his, Rich would adapt his, to kind of put them in different areas based upon the way we run our businesses. Some different, some the same. And then when we get in the room, now we can bring up this great report that shows one line item that says, hey, this is what you made selling product, selling hardware or software. And now we can see what everyone made and we can see what percentage of margin they had, what kind of money they make off of that. And we can see that one line item right there on a, on a report. And so that actually became very, very helpful for us in this, the get diving deeper into each one of our organizations. So kind of cool. Any questions on SLI or any pain that you've seen your spouse go through with SLI? Yeah, trying to get everything to line up, right? So I would like a show of hands, and, and of course I don't know all your names yet, nor do I know you, which husband's related, but how many of your husbands were up on the 15th till midnight getting their SLI numbers in so they'd have them complete? Yeah. I'm raising my hand because yes, I was actually doing that. Yeah, so uh, yeah, so sometimes it's a challenge to get those things in and it's a lot harder sometimes. Our, our numbers for our first three quarters of this year, which we were comparing in our meeting this, this time, had to be in by April 15th. So there were some other kind of important things happening around that same date too for, uh, for your businesses. So uh, it makes it kind of stressful trying to get all that done and get all the under numbers kind of uh, uh, together. So how am I doing so far? Have I gone off the deep end yet? No. Okay, well I said I was gonna talk about all these things. Okay. All right. You're doing great. Okay. All right, so um, uh, KPIs. So uh, key performance indicators is uh, a lot of us are going deeper than just what we see in an SLI report and realizing that we need some metric or some number to help us run our businesses. And so KPIs is the way we do that. Uh, balance sheets, P&Ls. Uh, profit and loss statements, those are the types of information that actually get keyed into SLI. And uh, so we'll talk about that a little bit and we'll bring up our, uh, with our my QBR. So cost of good, or COGS, you guys all heard COGS and what that is? So it's kind of interesting. Uh, it's interesting to see the evolution of partners within HDG, right? So um, uh, take you back and tell you a little bit about our experience. So five years ago when we joined HDG, uh, we had a staff of four people working with us. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were all technicians, mm -hmm. and Robert was a technician, mm -hmm. and he was running around doing technical work, hiring mm -hmm. other technicians, and had no idea how to run a business, mm -hmm. and uh, had no idea, you know, yeah, I need to be looking at that balance in the bottom line and all that stuff. I know what that is, sure, we're good. Uh, but really didn't have an idea of what it took to actually run a business and learn how to run a business. And for us, that's really what HDG has helped us do and specifically helped me develop is the skills to be able to go out there and understand what it becomes to become a manager of people and not a hire of other technicians. Uh, and then be what it becomes to become an entrepreneur and then onto and being an owner and the types of things you need to be looking at. This leadership track, I don't know whether any of your spouses are in the leadership track, but this has been awesome as the next level for us because uh, I'm realizing now that, okay, I, I, I've transitioned out of the technical role. I'll give you an example of how good that really is, right? So you had a problem with your laptop the other day, right? Mm -hmm. What did I tell you? You told me to call somebody at the office. <laughs> <laughs> and so. I did, and it got fixed. <laughs> if I'd have waited on him, I'd still be waiting. Yeah, the plumber's house, not so good. So yeah, so, um, uh, yeah, so uh, transitioning to being a manager, transitioning to being a, a, an entrepreneur, a business owner. So uh, definitely a role change. Can I interrupt Please? here? Yeah. Um, before Robert got into HTG and kind of understood what it meant to be a business owner, I always said he suffered from the Scarlett O'Hara syndrome. Remember Scarlett, fiddly D, I'll worry about that tomorrow. <laughs> that was him. And you know, when you're running a business, you can't do that. So HTG has gotten him. They were the intervention that got him away from being Scarlett O'Hara. So, and that's a good thing. Go tell, them a little, tell them a little bit about, um, um, let's see here. So I went to the first meeting in 2007. You didn't come with me. Uh -uh. Second meeting you went to San Diego, right? Yes. One of our bucket lists. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so we did San Diego, and you've been with me to pretty much every meeting since then. Yes. A couple of minor ones, right? Dallas yeah, some of uh, yeah, and I think at Tampa. But the first few times, 
that that I went with Robert. I, there wasn't anything like this, and there and I didn't go actually and sit in sit in the room, you know, where they where they have their their meetings at. Um, and and I thought that was okay. So can I just go ahead and do yeah. my little spiel? No, okay. Um, when Robert first got into HTG, HTG I thought great this is just something else for him to get on a plane and travel anybody felt that way in this room anybody okay 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 great y'all understand exactly what i'm talking about um then i started traveling some with him still didn't go into the meetings and then when we were in orlando we were in the board room they put us in and literally it was a room that had nothing but boards on the wall so and that's why it was called a board room I sat in that meeting. I did not sit at the table. I didn't take a seat at the table with the rest of the, the business owners, but I sat in the back and I listened. And on our flight home, I think I talked his ear off with all the questions. This stuff started making sense to me. And I, it started helping me understand that he's doing what he's doing. He's, he, there's a method to it. There's a rhythm to it. And then the, the second thing, the more that I sat in the meeting with all these guys, I tell you, we have what, 10 in our group? Mm -hmm. I have the utmost respect for these 10 men. I love these guys. These guys are great. And they're all in it together. They're trying to run a business. They're trying to learn how to run a business. And there's this camaraderie that's just, I just can't even begin to describe it. So then the next meeting, I went and I got to sit at the table. <laughs> it's like, you know, in Thanksgiving dinner, you've always been at the little kid's table, and then you get to move up to the, to the adult table. Yeah, I got to do that. And, and in fact, I still go now, and I sit at the table. I don't ever say anything or ask any questions, but you can bet I am writing them down. Robert, why aren't we doing this? Robert, what does this mean? What does this mean? Um, so I encourage each one of you at one time or another, sit in. Um, with your with your spouse's group, especially when they're doing their QBR, just sit in there for that. Sit in the back of the room, and I encourage you to take notes. And and trust me, it will start making sense to you. Pam. You know what? Um, I've done the meetings like late 2009. Your spouses provide so much value more than you think because we come with a totally different. Exactly. You are exactly right. Yep. That, um, you know, my first meeting, my kids were still little, and I said to Alex, I don't know if I'll be able to stop saying to you, just come and listen, and if you feel like you want to chime in, go ahead. Within 15 minutes, I started chiming in, and, and the, the facilitator was like, oh, you know, so you had some really good points, so it really built up my self-confidence yep. that, cause I, because I came from that different perspective, and um, it's just, it's been a great experience. So we really can provide value to the group, especially when you're talking about life plans and that, because it's all connected. It is all connected. It really, really is all connected. So, yeah. I, I think I have something to add to that. I, I started off at the table as well. And what I found is, I don't want to say I kept Brian honest, but he would always talk about the tech, the, and he would always leer away from all the other balancing uh -huh. aspects. And I kept bringing it back. And I was actually the only spouse in the room. I, I, I believe I still am. I missed the last two meetings, or yeah, last two meetings. And um, I think that spouses really bring a bit of honesty to them. They don't mean to gloss over, but most of them are techs at heart, and that's all they think about, and that's all they want to focus on. Exactly. And exactly. Their comfort zone. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> in the comfort zone. That's right. And um, and I I it was amazing for us because honestly, HTG saved us. It, we were really just going in circles and circles, and um, I, I believe we have a lot more growth um, that is very necessary, but I, I believe it's been the best thing that's ever happened to us. And I've learned so much about the business, and um, it, it almost gives you a sense of calmness in, in a very yeah. hectic life. Yeah. So okay. What good. I thought of business in the past, and I'm taking too much time, no, was I would go and I would look at the bank account, and I would see the bottom number and think, oh, okay, I can go shopping today. <laughs> there is more to know about this than looking at the bottom line. I always said, Robert and I, we each have our job. He makes it, I spend it. What can I say? I have to have fabric scrapbook and stuff, you know. Um, but, but becoming involved 
with HTG5, not only have, have we met and, and made all these friends, I mean, I know in my heart that if anything happened to Robert, any one of those guys would be right there right there with me at a moment's notice. And there, there's this camaraderie that, well, we've been group of the year, what can I say? <laughs> <laughs> so, not to brag or anything, but um, this, is, this is really a, a great group of guys. And hearing about what this one's doing in his business and what this one is doing in his business, just kind of opens the door for me to say, Robert, why aren't we doing this or why aren't we doing that? Um, it helped me, if anything, learn how to ask the questions that I could ask to Robert. And then that way, now I'm not involved in the businesses, I proofread, okay? I am the official proofreader for ISI uh, and I'm the caterer for ISI. And that's my job and that's exactly what I want to do. But now I can ask the questions and feel like I can ask and more than one syllable words on, on exactly uh, where we're going. And, and again, I can't encourage you all enough, ask your spouse if you could just sit in. If you wanna sit in for the whole meeting, I say go for it. But if you just wanna sit in for their QBR, do that. And I'll guarantee you, it will, it will make a dis difference. All these little words and all this stuff. Robert would come home and he'd say, well, we, you know, the KPIs and the, and the SLI and the COGS and then this. And to me, I was hearing blah, 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 <laughs> blah, 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 blah. And my eyes are rolling back in my head. But now, while I don't understand all of it, I understand a whole lot more than I did. And my daughter's fascinated. She said, mother, she said, you are not, you know, technically or businessly inclined, but she said, you really get some of this stuff. I said, yes, I do. Yes, I do. <laughs> so uh, anyway, that's, that's, that's my spiel is I encourage you to sit in um, and, and ask questions. Write down questions and then ask your spouse when it's over with. So, and, and something else too, and I'm going to say this out loud to Nancy. I love seeing this group of, of spouses here. And I would love for this to continue on. I'd love to see some kind of a spouse group or a spouse activity to where that when there is a meeting that there would be something for the spouses. Is Am I the only one that, that feels, feels right, that way? Good, oh good, good, I see, I see. Uh, honey, <laughs> if go. I would, I could. Or if I could, I would, I guess is what I should say. So anyway, Nancy, I'll just give that little, I'll give that little thought to you. So I'm done. So the cool thing for me was uh, that first meeting she sat in in the boardroom, and literally that was a, was a very room. interesting experience, a very small room, but um, was uh, that when she came back with this list of questions, uh, they were really, really, really good questions. And uh, uh, you know, she's always been very perceptive. Uh, you guys are very perceptive, far more than we are. And uh, so the ability for you to be in the room and, and be able to hear things that we're not hearing or ask questions that we're not even thinking about uh, such a valuable tool and so uh, it was it was great we were literally that first flight back it was literally the entire flight uh, was going through I think she had 10 pages of notes it was interesting so all right so what I've done here is pull up our um, our QBR and I've, I'm not going to pull through the whole thing because it take uh, 20 minutes which is what it's designed to do uh, but uh, uh, the QBR decks that are actually in the quarterly board reviews that each of your, your uh, uh, spouses are doing uh, maybe it'll look like this and maybe don't. So the, the groups are kind of autonomous and they do what they feel well, they can want to do within their own group. And so this is kind of the area that we, uh, we focus on in our group. Um, we have a very strong life work balance uh, aspect of our group uh, and we, we spend quite a bit of time on that. Um, matter of fact, the spouse survey, uh, how many have filled out the spouse survey before? So those questions came from her <laughs> and also from, uh, yeah. Uh, Dave Sobel's wife, uh, uh, Sharon, also helped us with those too. So, uh, but yeah, those were, uh, those were great, great ways for us to learn. So we just do a little bit of talking about what's going on in life. Um, there's actually a, a slide out there that we use in our group uh, that actually says, I'm gonna rate myself. So what's going on with me? How do, how do I feel like I'm doing? Um, so that's a kind of way to, to kind of gauge that. Uh, we talk about what's going on. We, Deborah and I are really actively involved in our church, and this was our Easter musical this year, which was uh, a little bit of an undertaking. So, uh, so uh, the spouse feedback forum. So the, my group got a real kick out of this a couple of quarters ago when I brought up the uh, trendy metrics and graphed them, <laughs> and showed where I was going up and going down. So, uh, 
But I, I usually give this to Deborah, and I don't give her uh, any report of what, what she returned in last time, because for me, it's a gauge as am I doing better or worse? You know, is there some areas that I really need to work on or not? And so it's, a, it's another metric. It's a key performance indicator for me for home. And then Deborah does it. Yes, sorry. Yep. Robert sent it to me in a, I think it's a PDF form. I would encourage you to encourage him without going to the divorce court on this. We got, we're not here for that. <laughs> um, get him to give it to you to where that you can do it. I'm sure he's not coaching you in, uh, directly, but maybe indirectly. <laughs> I, I really, I really, am, really encourage that. And take time to do it. And if you've got comments, and of course I've always got a comment. Um, yeah, there's always comments. <laughs> Now this is this has been it's been good. There's there was there's been a number of partners in in HTG five uh, that their their marriage has been affected by this and and very positively and uh, it was a big wake up call for them. We get very focused on our business at times and this is a way to to take that off and and understand what's going on. So pretty cool. All right, so uh, we share a little bit about family. So uh, in our slides, a lot of times there's pictures of what's going on. There's that grandson. <laughs> So there's a, an executive update slide that typically tells about what's going on within the business itself. So it's, a, it's kind of a, a real quick update as to uh, the types of things that are going on within the business. Um, talk a little bit about uh, what's going on with uh, some of the things in the group. I like to bring up pictures of staff, kind of nice. Um, and then uh, we often declare what we would like to have help with or have thank yous for. So uh, the peers in the group are helping me with things. And so this gives me an opportunity to, uh, to thank those that have actually helped on a number of areas. Uh, also gives me a way to declare some of the things I'd like to get see at the end of this pre uh, presentation. And then oftentimes there's a, a financial report that goes into things that start looking like this. And so this is kind of a way to start evaluating what's going on within a business. So <laughs> let's see here, we've taken, uh, uh, about uh, 45 minutes to get to here uh, and I want to spend just a little bit of time talking about the financials so we're gonna we're gonna do a little bit more with 10 minutes here and, and kind of run through this um, the main thing to keep in mind is is really three things in a company in financials right we've got the income which is the money that we're bringing in and that's going to be divided into a number of different areas and you'll hear your spouse talk about those as line of business so when they talk about selling product that's a line of business when they talk about offering a managed service, that's a line of business. When they talk about doing projects, that's a line of business. They talk about doing mobility or they talk about doing backup disaster recovery. Those are all lines of business. And so for each one of those, we kind of have a revenue stream that we're bringing in. And so what you see in this graph, the, the taller graph is, is basically a column for each one of those. So each one of those is a revenue area that we've got for the business and a specific amount of revenue that's been received, right? So in order for us to provide those services, so we provide managed services, and there are some costs involved in that, right? We have to have people that help us do that particular thing, right? So we've got service people that are uh, working hours, that are on the phones with our customers, uh, that are doing a number of, of different things for them. And we also have some hard costs. So we have costs like uh, uh, maybe a particular piece of software that we're using uh, that we run that is our, our, our management tool kind of keeps up with everything that's going on those. So those end up being the associated COGS, cost of goods sold for those particular items. So if I, if I sell a, um, a PC, I have a certain cost that's associated with that. The difference between that then ends up being the margin or the profit that we're making on that particular thing, the gross margin or gross profit. Because the thing I haven't taken out of there is expenses for principals, expenses for facilities, expenses for laptops, for desks, for everything else that's going on within the office. 
So what you see here then is you see a graph for, expense, or for revenue for each one of the quarters. So you can see what I'm reporting in my group here is I'm, I'm fairly happy. We grew over what we had done last year, but we're down from Q4 and Q3. So this would have been Q4 and Q3, and we're actually a little bit further down than where we were then, right? And then I could see the associated COGS to each one of the, uh, each one of the revenue areas. So in this case, this would have been our, our hardware COGS, our cost of goods sold, compared to the revenue that we actually brought in, the income we brought in. So hopefully most of your uh, partner presentations, most of the presentations you've seen are kind of set up this way. The numbers are great, P&L reports are great, but they end up being this huge amount of information and numbers and stuff. And oftentimes when you get it drilled down into something you can bring up on a screen, it becomes very easy to see. So what the partners in the peer group meeting are doing is basically evaluating what is the margin you're making on each one of these lines of business. And does that line up with mine or not? All right, so if I get in a meeting and someone says we're making 30% margin on product, I'm going, wow, how are you doing that? I'd love to know that because I'm only getting about 20% when we do ours. So, so then that's when we start getting on that level playing ground and we start playing field and actually start being able to compare numbers with each other. Clear as mud or pretty cool? Questions about that? Too bad. Okay, so. This is interesting because when we shorten these QBRs up, we used to do 45 minute QBRs times 12. So you wanna talk about a very long meeting, sitting there for 45 minutes 12 times was very, very interesting. So we shorten these up to 20 minutes. In 20 minutes, how are you gonna go through all the stuff you wanna go and get feedback from the group? So in our group, we do income and COGS, which is what we see here, and then we drop immediately to EBITDA. <laughs> so a really interesting term, yes? So. Uh, Interesting, we call it income, we call it revenue, but when we get to EBITDA, we call it earnings. So, but EBITDA stands for earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. So the thing to keep in mind about that, just to simplify it really easy, right, is that you, you have income, we're gonna subtract that COGS thing, right, which is the associated cost of doing that particular thing, and then we're gonna subtract the expenses of what it takes to run this office. Right? And then you got some interest, depreciation, amortization that play a part out here in the end of that, but less of a part probably than you would think. All right? And taxes, which is obviously out there, and that plays a more part than we want to. All right? But this allows me then to see where we flow and, and where we are and how we compare with other members in our group. All right? So it's a really great way of being able to assess that. Now with SLI, they keep trying to enhance how they give us this information so we can really kind of put it together and understand it better. In some organizations, the principal is not paid out of the expenses, right? In my organization, we're an S Corp, we are. So, so my salary, our salary comes out of the expenses of running our business. However, in an LLC, they may decide to, to actually do that as something at the end, not even included in the expenses. And so what we started seeing is we'd see these companies that had unbelievable EBITDAs, really nice EBITDAs, and we're trying to figure out, well, why is that? You know, I'm, we're way down here, these guys are doing great. And then we'd start talking, it's like, well, they're really struggling, I don't know what's going on here. Well, we realized that they were not compensating themselves. And so what the adjusted line is, that red line you see there underneath, is actually if we were paying fair market value for the principals or the partners in the business, then that's what that number would adjust to. All right, so it's a, it's a better indication as to what's going on within the business. Now that number has some interesting aspects as well. Uh, and Paul Dipple is talking in our next session, happens to be at the back of the room. Uh, hi, Paul. <laughs> and uh, Paul is the, the uh, designer, creator, founder of uh, Service Leadership Index. And so he can tell you more about that. But, uh, um, it, it basically allows us to do more of a comparison on numbers. All right, so I'm gonna pop out of that slide and I'm gonna drop down. So in our decks, we also provide these reports. So we do a, a green light, red light. So this is kind of a stoplight page that's part of our report. So the report that's produced by Service Leadership Index give us a way to evaluate us to not only the members in our group, but also to the best in class of in our particular model of the way we do businesses. And so this is another report that we use often that allows us to look at each one of the different lines of business or each one of our expenditures and are we good or are we not so good? And what's interesting is I could be red because I'm not spending enough money. 
Like for instance, in sales, I might not be spending enough money in sales, and that's the reason that line might be red for me. In this case, for us, it isn't, but that's the way it could be. Okay. All right, and then uh, some of the other slides that we use in our particular group is we break out our, our revenue so we can see what percentage we have in particular areas. So in this case, I can look at product revenue uh, versus infrastructure versus managed services. A again, another way for us to do comparisons within our group. So we talked about gross margin and it calls gross margin or gross profit. And this is the difference between what we make and what we spend for cost of goods sold. Right? And this is the number that also helps us judge what we're doing within our organization. And you can see we're trending down just a little bit in Q4 and Q1 for us. And then gross margin by hardware or by services. And here's where you can see the, the blue line there for us is the 20% services being on above the 50%. Phasing over, not too bad, all right. So multiple of W2 is kind of an interesting number that we also look at. Uh, so what this tells us is if we have a service technician, uh, what are they making for the company? So this tells me that they're making 2.5 times what they actually make, all right, which is kind of a number, 2.5 to three seems to be the norm for most of the groups. This is also a great wake up call for some partners that are trying to struggle on, on process and trying to get things a little bit more uh, set up for them as well. And then operating expenses and then looking at expenses as a percentage. So this slide's kind of interesting. So we have one member in our group that's well over $10 million in revenue. Uh, we're a little over a million dollars in revenue. So how in the world do we get in the room and compare ourselves to each other, right? That seems like it would be pretty impossible because it's like, okay, the numbers don't even add up at all. The interesting thing is within our organizations, within our businesses, percentages of things we do make sense. So like for instance, how many, what percentage of our revenue do we actually spend for sales? All right, so that's a percentage number. So this partner that's uh, making 10 million, we're making a million, we can say, well, we're about the same, we're about 10%. So we can look at that number and kind of draw some, some, some information from that. And that's one of the things that we get out of the SI report is the ability to look at each other on a percentage basis instead of looking at it just on the base numbers themselves. So we wanted to leave some time at the end of this for some questions. So uh, I'm going to open the floor and let you guys ask. And, uh, and it doesn't have to be just about financials. There's something else you'd like to know. By the way, this was one of our trips too for HDG. Uh, we went to uh, uh, Seattle, uh, which uh, the guys in the back are, uh, are from Seattle and uh, it's interesting. Uh, Deborah is convinced she wants to live there. And, uh, but the only months we've ever been in, in Seattle have been August. <laughs> so, so, and uh, August is an awesome month in Seattle in that area, but uh, not so much, much most of the rest of the year. So. so what questions do you have? Has HTG helped you reduce the number of hours you invest in running your company? <laughs> well, that's a great question. <laughs> Yeah, I'll sit down. I'll sit down. <laughs> um, yes and no. I, I think the hours that he's working is are, they're smarter. Does that make sense that he's working smarter? Um, is he working less? No, but that's a two-edged sword. He's a business owner, and when you're signing the check, you're going to work harder. Um, he's still working. Uh, he's working more but he's working smarter he's there there's uh, he's he's on a goal because he's learned these goals from HTG so the, does that answer your question uh, probably 60 yeah uh, so I mean we, we so we have no kids at home just the grandson right so so that helps uh, the other thing if it wasn't for HTG she would not be on board with this at all but the fact that, that she's involved in HGG and she understands what I'm doing, it's not that she doesn't appreciate that, but she knows what the overall objective is for us, mm -hmm. that, that I'm, I'm working on our retirement, I'm working on where we're going with, with us. And, and she also knows that we're gonna do things like this. We're gonna, we're gonna travel and, and get a chance to go out and be some nice places. We, we've determined that life's a journey, it's not a destination, and so we're not just working until the point we drop over, and it's, uh, we're having a lot of fun doing it. I mean, we've had a lot of fun over the last five years. You, See some of the pictures from that, so, yeah. I work a lot less hours than Timothy. How long have you been for HTG? Four years. 
Less hours now than you did before? That's good. That's awesome. We Nancy need to talk. Had a <laughs> <laughs> Nancy had a question. Nancy had a question. I may have just forgotten what I was going to say, but I think it, um, you know, my husband may be working the same or more, but um, also because of the group, he's more sensitive to it. And so if I have a, a problem with it and say, hey, you know, this month we have a lot going on and I really need you to spend more time with family or whatever. He's more sensitive to that than he used to be. Mm -hmm. And so that's good. And I'm more understanding of the time we spend. I think that's what I get from Deborah is I get more of an understanding for the time, although it's still not right to and, some extent. And it's much more difficult when you've got little ones. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. So yeah. And those of you that have little, that have got little children, they will grow up. <laughs> Trust me, it happens a lot quicker than than what you think. And also, I'll, I'll get your question, man. I have one more thing to say. Robert, and uh, he does work a lot, but he has never put work before us or our family, ever, ever, ever. And I, in the past, before HDG, mmm. Maybe not quite so much, but that's changed since he's been in HDG. And for that, I'm extremely thankful. So, and you had a question. I was to say, we, we, we do have young children, young children, so I know that's hard. And we did a whole work life balance thing in our group. And one of the things they did was they read a book called Choosing to Cheat. And it's where. We say it again, it was called what? Choosing to Cheat. Okay. And it's where not you know, how to cheat on your spouse, but how to cheat on time so that you're spending uh -huh. time on the things you really need. So my husband learned how to rearrange his time. So if he really needs to work, he may have to be home between five and eight until our little kids get there. And then I may have to give up some of my time with him so that he can get something accomplished. Uh -huh. It's a way to for him to work as many hours as he needs to, that he feels he needs to, but find a way to make it work with your with your family. So I think that's one of the things that we, we got out of that whole spousal work-life balance thing. Good. And I Good think you uh, you have a session this afternoon on uh, how to live with an entrepreneur. Yeah. I think uh, you'll probably have a great opportunity to discuss those topics uh -huh. during that time, right? Get a good discussion. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I bet. I bet. All right. So we finished up our, our hour together this morning. Uh, so uh, please feel free to, to get something to drink if you want. I think we're back in here at 940. So it's really a quick short break and then back in. So thank you very much. Enjoyed it. Thank you. Very much. Nice. Brought to you by the fine folks at Varvid, video and digital media for business. Contact us at info at or online at varvid.com.